Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of Ask Rob Trek where I try to answer your questions from the comment sections of my videos and if you have any questions feel free to leave them down in the comments below and of course for everyone watching if you find these videos helpful consider buying me a coffee or making a small donation in the links below because they help me to continue making videos like this and they're greatly appreciated. All right today we have a couple of questions uh, they're related to the custom modes on the OM1 uh, but a lot of this will apply to uh, other uh, Olympus cameras as well. And the first one here is from uh, Ken Melman. And he says, uh, Hi Rob, how do you load a custom setting file, the star.set, into OI Share? Uh, and actually, it's pretty easy, so let me uh, walk you through the steps. Okay, for those of you maybe not familiar, basically, before we had the OM Share app on our phones, uh, that could save the custom settings, say, from our camera onto our phones, and then we can load them from our phone back to our cameras. We had to do it on our computers via the OM uh, Workspace app. And uh, what we would do is connect the camera up via USB to our computer, open up the OM Workspace, and then save the settings from our camera onto our PC or, you know, computer. And the, the settings would be saved as a .set or .set file. And... Um, you know, if we wanted to recall those settings back under our camera, we'd have to open up OM Workspace, connect our camera, and save them back. Uh, so what Ken is asking is, how do you take those set files that you have on your PC and put them onto your phone so you don't have to do this, like, circle uh, of going from OM Workspace to your camera back to your phone, then getting the next setting, and so on. So you get what I mean here. Uh, and there's probably 10 different ways to do it, but I'll show you the way that I do it. All right, so I'm going to hook up the camera to my PC, and you would just would need to put it into storage mode, and then open up uh, OM Workspace, and you want to go to the menu, select Camera, Camera Settings, and Save. And what this is going to do is save the settings from your camera to the computer. And I like to deselect the uh, latest settings, uh, I just like to save the my sets, and the my sets are the same thing as the custom settings, so they need to kind of change the uh, terminology there. But um, I'm going to save the settings from my camera and just call them Street Monochrome, and I'm going to save them to a very specific folder that I created for camera settings, and just click Save. So now it's saving all of the settings from my camera to my PC. All right, from here, I'm just going to open up my Gmail and send the file that I saved in this folder to myself so that I can get this on my phone. Uh, so we click send, I open it up on my phone, and then I just simply download that file that I attached to my phone. And then I open up the OI Share app and then go into the uh, settings there, click on camera management, and then click on camera settings and then import settings. And then from here, I click on uh, this week because it didn't show there. And all I have to do is click on the file that got saved to my phone and it just loads it right into this area. Now there's probably 10 other ways to do this, like maybe hooking your phone up directly to your PC and transferring the files that way, or maybe doing it through an FTP protocol so you could do it wirelessly. But um, I thought doing it through email would be the most universal way. Uh, and that's how I would do it. But that said, um, you should note that not all cameras are compatible with the OI Share app in terms of saving custom settings or loading them onto your camera. So, for example, um, the EM1X, even if I save the setting files onto my phone, there's no way to get them off my phone onto the camera from the phone. So uh, just keep that in mind. But with the OM1, it works perfectly fine. All right, the next question here is from William Mobs, and it's also related to the custom settings on the uh, OM1. But uh, he says, my question is, will I be required to make menu changes to both C1 and C2 settings, or are they now available across all operation modes? Uh, I know you often suggest doing a total camera reset, which I did before implementing your C1 and C2 settings. So is it possible to select C1 settings, make new menu adjustments, and save them back to C1, overwrite them, or save the C3 and delete C1 settings. Um, yeah, it's very simple, and I'll show you the way that I do it. And then uh, the second question was about, uh, on my 1DX and 5D Canon, I'm able to store custom settings to an SD card, reset the camera, and reload to save custom settings from the SD card. Is that possible on the OM-1? Not that I'm aware of. Uh, 
I think there might be a hack where somebody figured that out, but uh, officially there's there's no way to load custom settings from an SD card onto your camera. But let me show you how to uh, overwrite C1, C2 settings. All right, so I think the core of your question is, is it possible to select C1 settings, make new menu adjustments, and save them back to C1, or save them to C3 and delete C1, right? So basically, you have to put the camera into C1 mode. I mean, that's the most direct way to do it so that all your current C1 settings come up. And as you can see, I have a single point, color profile, and pre-manual focus. But let's say I wanna change this to a small point. Uh, let's do monochrome, and let's select uh, SAF. So I made, I made some minor changes there, right? All I have to do is go back into the menu, go into custom mode, C1 set, Assign, set, and set. And now um, all these settings or changes I just made were saved to C1. Now, if I want to save these to C3, it's the same process. Custom mode, C1, but this time I'll go to C3, assign, set, and set. And now C3 has the same settings. And then if I want to delete C1, I'll just go into custom mode, set, set, and reset. And now you can see C1 is empty. C2 and C3 have those settings. All right, now there is one little catch to starting in C3. If we look at our settings, right, we're in aperture priority with a small point monochrome SAF silent shutter. If all I want to change is say, go f keep all of these settings, but I want this to be shutter priority instead, I can't do that by starting in C3. I have to go into uh, shutter priority mode, like so. And then if you look at the shutter priority settings, they're basically totally different, right? Small point, color profile, continuous AF, continuous shutter. Uh, what I'd have to do is go into the menu, go into custom mode, C3, recall, and say yes. And now if we look at the settings, we have small point monochrome SAF silent shutter. And then we go into the menu, go into custom mode, C3, set, assign, set. And now C3 is no longer aperture priority. It's now shutter priority in monochrome SAF silent shutter. Now there is another way to kind of work with custom settings that is, uh, can be a little awkward, but I'll just show you one way. And I have a, I think I have a whole tutorial on this somewhere, but basically what you can do is let's say C3 right now is shutter priority, right? And we're in aperture priority doing whatever shooting we're doing. And we want to recall C3 without having to turn the mode dial. And remember, C3 is shutter priority, but we're in aperture priority. But that doesn't matter, because if you recall C3, it will uh, force the camera into shutter priority. But if you recall, when we did it through the menu um, and did the recall, it didn't change the picture mode, right, from aperture to shutter. But if you go into the menu and go into your button menu, button function, and let's assign, say, I don't know, the ISO button here. Let's assign the ISO button to C3, like that. Now if I push the ISO button, you'll notice that it went right to shutter priority, and of course, recalled all of the other settings we have. And if I tap the ISO button again, it'll go back to uh, aperture priority and whatever settings we had there. So you can kind of toggle between aperture priority and shutter priority, or I should say C3, just by pushing the ISO button that I programmed in the menu. So I went through that very quickly, but you have to think very carefully when you're setting up your custom modes, uh, assigning buttons to custom modes, especially we're gonna to be toggling between regular photo modes and custom modes. 
uh, but it's kind of a blessing and a curse, right? If you get really good at it, I think it work, will help you work much better in the field and much faster being able to switch modes and settings very quickly at the push of a button. Uh, but then again, uh, it can be a little overwhelming at first. So uh, just practice a little bit and you'll get the hang of it. You can always reset the camera and start over, right? So I hope you guys found this video helpful. If so, consider buying me a coffee or making a donation in the links below because they help me to continue making videos like this for you and they're greatly appreciated. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you again soon.